Oh, I didn't see you there. Come join me, won't you? Thank you. <gasps> He's got his gloves on. What's he gonna talk about this time? Well, before I tell you, uh, a couple of changes. I got some nice touchscreen action here. So, and I've even hooked up the uh, microphone. It's got uh, the cable running through. And I could talk through it like this, but that's gonna be for a different season. Uh, I also have got a new advert. I'm gonna be receiving um, a cord from Blue Lagoon, thanks to Jason. 780-676-0130 for all your AV needs. Uh, also, I'm going to be interviewing some people soon, and I've got some equipment set up for that. And it's supposed to work like this. Ta-da! Hey Adrian, when are we going to put this stuff up on YouTube? Oh, this is so cheesy. I love this. I love this effect. It's so, so minimalistic. Picture in picture. Lo-fi! So, right, why do I have gloves on? Because today I'm going to talk to you about my percussion. How to discover that I have rhythm? Well, um... For pretty much as long as I can remember, uh, tapping on desks. Really, basically, that's all it is, just... Or even on the self. Clip. Rhythm. It was something I never really had to work on. It was just always there. Um, yeah, no formal direction whatsoever. Everything is just being kind of innate. Um, kind of makes me think that everyone's got it, but not everyone has got it. Ta ti ti ta ti ta. Tapping. <laughs> I've been tapping on desks at work incessantly. Uh, clicking of the pen, but that's not a very popular one. I will tell you, um, back in the early 2000s, I auditioned to be a drummer once. I had gotten sticks, really old ones, and uh, practiced and jammed, and it was fun. Nothing came of that band, but I did realize that I had a knack for music, for uh, trying new things, and having rhythm, and tapping on things at the bus station, people looking at me. Whatever. I've been playing in bands, there was always a drummer, so I didn't have to worry about the percussion, uh, just as long as I kept things on time, playing bass, or guitar, or singing, coming in and out, right? Just the necessary things. And then, I was gifted something. At a protest, I was honored to be given this. A Remo Djembe. And I started going to Toronto drum circles, indoors, very loud. Very loud. Thanks, uh, Dev Brito, for organizing it. Hooray for fun! Um, now called Drummers in Exile because we got kicked out. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, he also managed to get me this amazing strap, uh, seatbelt, repurposed. Done by Remo, this is a synthetic drum. Uh, Jambes are popular, particularly from Africa, um, but percussion is pretty much universal all over the world. There's drums of all sorts of different kinds and shapes and sizes. I do want to take a quick moment to point out that uh, that is a synthetic drum uh, djembe. Uh, there are also non-synthetic ones, like this one I got myself in polka. I'll be playing different ways. Usually um, mounted, so... I was enchanted enough uh, with the whole drum circle community that I actually started a Facebook group about drum circles and the ethnomusicology behind them. Uh, a lot of experimentation with style, uh, musicianship, friends, um, the culture, uh, the whole philosophy of the community getting together to create all this amazing uh, energy. And I was very experimental. Uh, for the first time, I wasn't playing in a, in a particular band format or being put up on stage expected for everyone to look at me while I sing and play guitar. I was able to express myself and be adventurous.
ability to do that sort of thing felt really, really good because at that time in my life, uh, where I was questioning my career, had burnt out already like the third or maybe even fourth time. I think it was third time and then the fourth time. And I kept on going back to the drum circles and, and community rhythm. I was very experimental with my musicianship at that time. Um, I had everything hooked up in a different way and trying to put it together in my condo. But during the summertime, I would bike down to Trinity Bellwoods dressed up in completely different clothes and a lot of percussion instruments, all strapped onto the back of my bike <laughs> with bungee cords. Uh, it would take me an hour to get there and an hour back, and uh, I would spend maybe about four, five, six hours there sometimes uh, on Sundays. It was the best. In fact, I bet uh, the majority of the people that were in Tri Trinity Bellwoods would not even recognize who this is because I would never dress like this. Getting closer. Getting closer. Props to Fairy's Pajamas, who sold me this amazing outfit. And that they're amazing holsters too. I use this all the time at work, and it's helped many, many people. So, uh, if you participate in the drum circle and want to know more about the djembe and you have one, or just borrow because people are very friendly, um, just have them instruct you on how to hold it and then learn some of the basic rhythms. And I always uh, overcomplicate things. Uh, basic rhythms for me are not really fun, so I get bored. I start to do um, hand switching. Um, play a pattern on one side and then switch over. Try to keep it interesting by um, complementing the patterns, um, listening to what other one else is doing, and then finding a place where you yourself can fit in. Uh, I think that's really good instruction. That's a Dev Bredel. He's uh, taught me that one. You learn how to listen. That's important. Uh, and there's also a lot of things to keep you occupied visually, so you kind of get lost into the music yourself. Uh, it's percussion, and it should be complementary, so it's more than the sum of its parts. Uh, I got to the point where I was playing in the drum circles, I was able to dance and play at the same time, and that's a lot of fun. Um, participate even more. Uh, dancing and playing uh, at the same time is a lot of fun, uh, but if you want to start to incorporate lots of different sounds into it, you can start uh, experimenting with other instruments that complement the djembe. Uh, for example, I start to use sticks with mine. And because I have a synthetic djembe, I didn't care if it got scratched or uh, worn away or whatnot. It's a lot of fun. Um, the sounds, it just cuts right through. Uh, and I would experiment with even other instruments that also can cut right through. Um, I would like to introduce you to my jingle bag. So called, because it jingles. Maracas. A cabasa. Tambourine, of course. And a standard rock and roll basically means you have to have a tambourine too. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. Quiro! So many times I pull this thing out. 
And everyone's just like, oh, what's that sound? What's that? Where's that coming from? So much fun. You don't need a $300 gem to do this sort of thing. To participate and dance. Of course, you need a cowbell. And if anyone there remembers, Hearing this noise, it was me. And percussion for other spiritual reasons. For example, you get something from Tibet. all these different percussion instruments you start to experiment and try different cultures and from different regions of the world and you end up with cool things like didgeridoos now didgeridoos themselves are not exactly percussion instruments but you can breathe rhythmically and hence percussion um, i like this compact one easy to carry <laughs> Uh, the whole culture uh, uh, of the whole phenomenon of what a drum circle is. I've got a Facebook thing about it, so if you're curious, you can check it out. And uh, I post things almost daily on it. Now, I do have a drum kit, which is over there. And it's also a lot of fun. And I can drum, and I didn't even realize I could until I actually got myself a used tiny little drum kit, the Drum Junior. A junior drum kit from um, a thrift store uh, and uh, I paid like a hundred bucks for it and it was missing like just two pieces two small like legs so I was able to replace them and uh, turns out hey I can drum and playing the drums you're moving your feet all the time along with your hands and uh, it's a, a synchrony you have to learn and practice and practice and practice and then apply and practice and you get some amazing results and inspiration. But more, I found out that I could actually sing and drum at the same time. Now, I've been to bands, uh, live shows, uh, I've seen uh, the drummer singing and doing a freaking great job and wondering, oh my god, that's amazing, how can you do that? And as it turns out, if you practice, you should be able to do so as well. Um, I have some videos back on Facebook of me playing to Zeppelin and U2, Annie DeFranco, and I can sing and play. It's just that much fun. I guess I could have clued in uh, back in the early 2000s when I was playing with bands that I was able to um, stomp my feet and do tambourine at the same time as playing and strumming and singing. It's a whole body motion, a whole body involvement. It's a different way of being. And if you could do that in a band, it feels absolutely fantastic because, again, it's more than just the sum of the members playing. It's more than the sum of its parts. Uh, same thing with a drum circle. Uh, and that could be a huge community. It could be a whole festival full of people all having a really, really good time. And a lot of people need that sort of thing in their the certain times of their lives. For example, me. I wasn't working. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my career. Uh, I stuck at home with musical instruments and that I can only jam with by myself. I needed other people and percussion allowed me to participate anonymously with a whole bunch of other people and it was such a blast. Uh, made some friends, still have some friends with people, um, relationships. It's just been such a blessing. Namaste. It should be noted that a lot of these communities also uh, enjoy altered states of consciousness in a different kind of way, meaning drugs. Uh, and uh, I don't advocate for that at all. Um, you don't need them. And uh, same thing with alcohol. And of course, it should go without saying that you never take candies from strangers. In fact, nowadays, 
I wouldn't take food from strangers either. The same thing goes with uh, any kind of uh, music culture. Uh, there's always going to be temptations uh, presented to you to uh, change your mind, altered states of consciousness, but just say no. Music in itself is the drug. Music in itself. Uh, whether it's percussion or percussive instrumentation, uh, percussive rhythms that uh, move you, that uh, inspire you to get up and get down, um, that's what you need. You don't need anything else. Essentially, it's an invitation for community. And with that community, you can participate as much as you'd like. Um, you might get frowned upon if you over-participate. So, <laughs> just be smart. Uh, something that the percussion decides really allowed me to learn about myself is that I've got rhythm and I'm very groove oriented. Uh, I like to get into a pattern and stay there in a pocket as it were. And I can dance at the same time. It's allowed me to realize that there's another way of existence and that's in the uh, full flow of music through my being. Uh, and uh, it's allowed me to branch out and to meet other people from all different kinds of walks of life as variable as, uh, as the scene whichever you want to participate in. Where do I want to take this uh, percussive experimentation? Well, I would really love to have my own drum kit. And I've got brushes, which I really want to use. I can't do it on that synthetic beast. And I've got mallets. Oh, no, oh, so tactile. No, oh, my right brain is going crazy. I also really, really want a gong. So that's the whole percussion side of my musicianship. Um, again, if you want to continue watching, then I'm going to continue making more and vice versa. Hope you enjoyed this episode. See you next time.